Hi, I'm Stormy O'Mardian. Welcome to The Power of Praying. I'm talking today about my book, The Power of a Praying Woman. This is episode one, Don't Forget to Pray for You. I not only wrote this book for you, but I wrote it for myself as well. That's because I'm like you. Many days I find life difficult rather than easy, complex rather than simple, potentially dangerous rather than safe, and exhausting rather than exhilarating. But I've come to know that God can smooth my path, calm the storms in my life, keep me in all I care about safe, and even make my way simple when I ask him to carry the complexities of life for me. But these things don't just happen, not without prayer. In the midst of our busy lives, too often we don't pray. We don't pray enough, or we only pray about the most pressing issues and neglect to take the time to really get close to God, to know him better, and to share with him the deepest longings of our heart. In our pray and run existence, we shut off the very avenue by which he brings blessings into our lives. And we risk waking up one day with that empty, insecure feeling in the pit of our stomach, frightening us with the thought that our foundation may be crumbling and our protective armor may be as fragile as an eggshell. It's not that I stopped walking with him. To the contrary, I couldn't make it through a day without him. It's not that I stopped praying. Actually, I was praying more than ever about everyone else on the planet. But I didn't pray about my own walk with the Lord. It's not that I didn't read his word. I read for hours as I did research in the scriptures for different projects I was working on and the Bible study classes I was taking. But I didn't give God time to speak to me personally through it. I didn't take enough time for God and me alone. And as a result, I became so depleted, I couldn't go on. I felt like that eggshell, as if I could be crushed with very little outside pressure. I knew I needed more of God in my life, and nothing on earth was more important than that. There wasn't anything else that could satisfy the hunger I felt inside, except more of his presence. And I came to realize how important it was for me to guard and protect my personal relationship with God in prayer. This episode one from The Power of a Praying Woman is called Don't Forget to Pray for Yourself. The way to avoid the kind of thing I experienced is to pray about every aspect of your life in such a manner that it will keep you spiritually anchored and reminded of what God's promises are to you it will keep you focused on who God is and who he made you to be. It will help you and me to live God's way and not our own. It will lift our eyes from the temporal to the eternal and show us what is really important. It will give us the ability to distinguish the truth from a lie. It will strengthen our faith and encourage us to believe for the impossible. It will enable us to become the women of God we long to be and believe we can be. Who among us doesn't need that? In my previous books on prayer, I've shared the ways husbands and wives can pray for one another, how parents can pray for their children, and we can all pray for our friends, family, and neighbors. But in this book, Power of a Praying Woman, I want to share how you can pray for you. I want to help you draw close to your Heavenly Father, to feel His arms around you, to maintain a right heart before Him, to live in the confidence of knowing you are in the center of His will, to discover more fully who He made you to be, to find wholeness and completeness in Him, and to move into all He has for you. In other words, I want to show you how to effectively cover your life in prayer so that you can have more of God in your life. In this book, I give 31 ways to pray for yourself. That's one for every day of the month or however you want to do it, at your own pace. You know what's best for you. Before I came to know the Lord, I was involved in all kinds of occult practices and Eastern and New Age religions. I searched for God in each one of them, 
hoping to find some meaning or purpose for my life. I was desperate to find a way out of the emotional pain, fear, and depression I had experienced on a daily basis since I was a child. I thought there surely must be a God, and if I could just be good enough to get close to him, perhaps something of his greatness would rub off on me, and then I could feel better about myself and my life. Of course, I was never able to do that, because the gods I chased after were distant, cold, and remote. And this depressed me all the more, because I was raised by a mother who was distant, cold, and remote, not to mention abusive, frightening, and cruel. It was later determined that she was mentally ill, and I have since forgiven her for all that I suffered at her hand. Nevertheless, the memories of my childhood eventually snowballed into an avalanche of pain that became so unbearable that I ended up being suffocated by my own hopelessness and crushed into suicidal despair. But it was here, at the lowest point of my life, when I was 28 years old, that I learned who God really is and received Jesus as my Savior. This began a process of deliverance, healing, and restoration, the likes of which I had never dreamed possible. From the time I received the Lord and began to feel his life working in me, I could see the common thread in all those other religions and practices I had dabbled in previously. This similarity was that the gods of each of those religions had no power to save or transform a human life, but the God of the Bible did. He's the one true living God, and when we find him and receive him, his spirit comes to dwell in us. By the power of his spirit, he transforms us from the inside out and miraculously changes our lives. I also learned that he is a God who can be found, a God who can be known, a God who wants to be close to us. That's why he is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. But he draws close to us as we draw close to him. James 4.4 4 says that. If I could sit down and talk to you in person about your life, I would tell you that if you have received the Lord, the answer to what you need is within you. That's because the Holy Spirit of God is within you, and he will lead you in all things and teach you everything you need to know. He will transform you in your circumstances beyond your wildest dreams if you will give up trying to do it on your own and let him do it his way and in his time. This is not about striving to be good enough to get to God, for there's no way any of us can be. This is about letting all of the goodness of God be in you. It's about drawing closer to God and sensing Him drawing closer to you. This is about an intimate walk with God and the wholeness that will be worked in you because of it. For years after I started writing books, I traveled all over the United States speaking to women's groups. One year, nearly everywhere I went, I took a survey for a book I was writing called The Power of a Praying Husband. I wanted to know how women most wanted to be prayed for. Their response was not surprising, but the fact that it was unanimous in every city and every state was amazing. The number one personal need of all women surveyed was that they would grow spiritually and have a deep, strong, vital, life-changing, faith-filled walk with God. I eventually stopped taking the survey because the results were always the same. I'm sure that you, like me and many women, want a deep, intimate, loving relationship with God. You wouldn't be listening to me talk about this book if you didn't. You may long for the closeness, the connection, the affirmation, that who you are is good and desirable. But God is the only one who can give all that to you all the time. Your deepest needs and longings will only be met in an intimate relationship with him. No person will ever reach as deeply into you as God will. 
No one can ever know you as well or love you as much. That insatiable longing for more that you feel, the emptiness you want those closest to you to fill is put there by God so that he can fill it. God wants us to want him. And when we realize that it's him that we want, we become free. We are free to identify the longings, loneliness, and emptiness inside of us as our signal that we need to draw near to God with open arms and ask him to fill us with more of himself. That this deep and intimate relationship with God that we all desire and can't live without doesn't just happen. It must be sought after, prayed for, nurtured, and treasured. And we must continually seek after, pray for, nurture, and treasure it. The Bible says in James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. But we can never draw close to God and get to know him well or develop the kind of intimate relationship we want unless we spend time alone with him. It's in those private moments that we are refreshed, strengthened, and rejuvenated it's then we can see our lives from God's perspective and discover what is really important. That's where we understand who it is we belong to and believe in. God has so much to speak into your life, but if you don't draw apart from the busyness of your day and spend time alone with him in quietness and solitude, you will not hear it. Jesus himself spent much time alone with God if anyone could get away with not doing that, it certainly would have been him. How much more important must it be for us? I know finding time alone to pray can be difficult, but if you will make it a priority by setting a specific time to pray every day, perhaps writing it in your calendar the way you would any other important date, and determine to keep that standing appointment with God, you'll see answers to your prayers like never before. Remember, if you haven't been praying much, you can't expect things to change like overnight. It takes a while to get the enormous ocean liner of your life turned around and headed in a different direction. It doesn't immediately reposition itself the moment you begin steering. In fact, you may hardly see any changes at first. It's the same way with prayer. Prayer can turn your life around, but it doesn't always happen the moment you utter your first words. It may take a time of continued prayer before you actually see the scenery change. This is normal, so don't give up. You will soon be heading full speed in a new direction. Far too often, people give up just before their breakthrough into the realm of answered prayer. Remember, this trip is not a mini vacation tour around the harbor. It's a lifelong voyage to meet your destiny. Giving up is not an option. Let me tell you something about you. And that is, God has a great future for you. I know this because he said so. He said you have not seen, nor heard, nor have even imagined anything as great as what he has prepared for you says that in 1 Corinthians 2.9. You have no idea how great your future is. He says that what he has for you is so great that if you truly understood it, you would feel that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in you. Romans 8.18. 8, that means whatever you envision for your life right now is already too small. Although God promises you a future full of hope and blessing, it's not gonna happen automatically. There are some things you have to do. One of them is to pray about it. It says that in Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Another is to obey God. But don't worry, God will help you with both of those if you ask him. The Holy Spirit is God's guarantee to you that he will help you do what you need to do and bring to pass everything he promised. Just know that every time you pray and obey, you are investing in your future. Would you pray with me about this? Lord, I draw close to you today, grateful that you will draw close to me as you have promised in your word. 
I long to dwell in your presence, and my desire is for a deeper and more intimate relationship with you. I want to know you in every way you can be known. Teach me what I need to learn in order to know you better. I don't want to be a person who is always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I want to know the truth about who you are. I know that you are near to all, all who call upon you in truth. God, help me to set aside time each day to meet with you alone. Enable me to resist and eliminate all that would keep me from it. Teach me to pray the way you want me to. Help me to learn more about you. Lord, you have said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. I thirst for more of you because I'm in a dry place without you. I come to you this day and drink deeply of your spirit. I know you're everywhere, but I also know that there are deeper manifestations of your presence that I long to experience. Draw me close so that I may dwell deeper in your presence than ever before. In Jesus' name I pray. You know, even though we live in a world where everything in our lives can change in an instant, and we can't be certain what tomorrow will bring, but God is unchanging. You may have already lost your false sense of security, and that's a good thing, because God wants you to know that your only real security is found in Him. Although you may not know the specific details about what's ahead, you can trust that God knows and he will get you safely where you need to go. In fact, the way to get to the future God has for you is to walk with him today. Begin now. Say, I want to walk with you, Lord. Help me to do that. <laughs>